Right, so guys, gonna show you how to scud this red brick wall here behind me. And again, the mix is on the channel. The mix I'm gonna do here will have salt inhibitors in it instead. Um, that's just trying to prevent any salts coming through. Um, I'm gonna be a tiny bit of waterproofers, but no motor mix. But anyway, so I'm gonna show you how I scud these red brick walls here and then how I float them and render them up ready for plastering and make to how to plaster them or might not how to actually skim finish them uh, see how it goes how much time I have to make these videos while doing the job again scud coat float coat ready for the plastering coat a couple of wee things just before we actually get stuck in get messy Gloves are pretty good for this as it's a very wet, wet mix and we're going to be splashing it on. Again, old work clothes, don't be wearing your, your finest. And goggles would be good guys as well. Um, I've done this too many times, I uh, seem to be pretty good at not getting myself in the eyes. But I do recommend, especially any beginners, get some goggles on. Really I should wear goggles as well. But get the goggles on and maybe put your hood and stuff up. Keep your skin as covered as possible. This satin cement can burn you pretty bad. So the next thing guys is, well I'm going to start the top here. But you do want to make sure the wall's well dusted down. Although this slurry coat can act as a stabilizer. I can remember jobs where it's, it wasn't a load burn wall. And the wall was just wobbling after all the rain that came off. Literally like like a shaky tooth ready to go at any time and after it was scudded it was solid again and no, no jokes and I've also heard stories of structural engineers recommending a scud coat actually to strengthen old walls that have been chipped down again a supporting wall that may be a bit different but a non load burn wall you know I've, I've heard many of the stories of people scudding them and it, it strengthens them back up so sometimes these old houses really are held um, apart by the, the plaster but you can see getting on rightly here just splashing it on again dust it down you can give it a wee bit of a wet but again this is a slurry coat and we're inside and stuff so it's not super necessary um, especially if you're wanting to go ahead and float it next you can see I'm more or less covering every brick and every motor joint and clean down these angles guys and your corners and your joints it's very very important when it comes to patching that your joint stays as clean as possible so the way I do this is I usually scrape down the joints and get them nice and clean um, again if you're going to plaster the whole wall just to scrape down might do them but because this is getting patched, they will need washed. And again, don't forget to clean your cornice here at the top. Pretty important. And again, just clean water. These old cornices can be quite fragile as well. So when you are working up to them with your trowel and stuff, you want to be a wee bit more gentle and take a bit more time around them. They can be crumbly. So the last thing you want to do is have to try to patch one of them up if you knock the whole thing off. But I think that's pretty much the scud part you know use the, the hurling trowel dyson trowel don't overload it and get a nice bit of a spread and splatter it on just do the bottom here show you that so now that i have the top done and washed down i can crack on with the bottom these bricks do dry they're what i call high suction and um, pr probably one of the most high suction things there is but wouldn't be as high suction as soap block um you know that that sort of them white soap bricks you get that you can cut with a saw they're probably one of the most high suction again a scud coat would work great on those and um, we taste the waterproofer and spr in it just hold back your your next coats but yeah make sure you just cover up the floors guys when you are doing things like this because it, it's very hard to wash up and with spr in it it's even harder to wash so anything you get you do kind of want to clean it and wash up and just working down the corner here first and you can see you can 
see how I'm spreading it and getting a nice night. You don't want it too lumpy bumpy. If it's lumpy bumpy, you won't have a very nice um, finish and it'll be a horrible key to work over because it'll be all too too proud and sometimes you know it's big big lumps in it you can end up prouder than the existing wall here that I'm gonna do and again if the brick's nice and flat and you put it on lumpy bumpy say you're rendering outside and you scud coat it and it's all lumpy bumpy you're just giving yourself heartache coating over it so you, you want a nice even uniform spread over it, a lovely key um, just ready to to grab the next coat of satin cement render. So, if anybody's wondering about the suction of this red brick, you can see them ones drying out there, 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 there. And this is literally just done. So, you can see how they're drying out here. And that can be good if you're wanting to sort of scratch it or float it the same day. So, as you know, we'll have it all scudded here. You can see it well dried out and time for the float coat you can actually like i said this high suction stuff you can go over it the same day um, as long as you didn't soak the life out of it all first because the moisture is in the scud coat as well again if it does dry out too much you can always give it a wee splash of water um, before you do float it but some of these things you can do same day um, the likes of the the wall on the left there some you can't they're too heavy and just depends on the slurry coat and stuff but we'll talk about that one a different day basically we're on this patch here and it's scudded is the first one and now we're floating it. and basically like i always do I always start the top work my way down so kind of want to make sure you you beef out towards that cornice there again your house might not have cornice or the job you're doing might not have it might just be a ceiling but no doubt there'll be a gap along that ceiling so you'll want to sort of blend it out beef it out so that's well filled same as the the joint here now the joint again i can't stress this enough this is what the patch is all about it's about that joint nothing else it's about getting that joint nice and clean and seamless ready for paint paper you're trying to make that visible but to do that we need to make sure we really really well push the gear into that as well guys um, that wall down that joint Peter himself has stripped it all down there and it is solid so I'm not too concerned about anything flaking off but again these old houses sometimes you can get a wee bit of an eye opener where some of the plaster starts popping off but fortunately that's not the case here and again that'll be probably a different video but the idea here is to fill it all out and then get it straight and then we'll be rubbing it up and again like I said the high suction you know you can use it to your advantage as well again if you're new to plastering your DIY um, this kind of works gonna be pretty hard um, I've seen people who have been plastering for years and years on site come into houses like this and making quite a lot of mistakes as the suction catches them out it's not you're not working over fresh block it's the same as old block. Old block isn't fresh block. There's different suctions. Um, and that that's something you need to learn to be a plaster. You need to sort of learn the background. Every wall's different, every ceiling's different. You, you sort of have to try and use your experience. You're only gonna get it over experience, but you'll use your experience from similar jobs to adapt and learn how to basically survive on older jobs like this so basically when i was an apprentice we done lots of new builds but we also done lots of renovation jobs just just exactly like this one red brick and i was the, the apprentice so i got the, the lovely job of scudding everything and again guys scudding is probably the most important job and i had to scud it out the whole houses and then the next day we'd all come in and float but yeah here we are so the easiest part of this, this this is where it will be a bit easier for DIYers and new 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 plasters learning it. I'm patching this in, so I'm working off the existing wall, and you can see them couple of slacks and nearly got it all built out in one go. Again, I don't like to try to always get things out in one go, especially on block. It can slide down. I prefer building it out in stages. I uh, also find it a bit tidier on the floor. But again, whatever 
suits you in whatever way you're adapting and taught you know you might be taught to beef it all the way out and then cut it back in stages but with this stuff you can see how dry it kind of gets so to me it is better bring it out slowly um, some of these old houses bricks are in and out as well funny enough between the neighbour and this house it's just one single skim of brick it's not there's no cavity so you know if there was a brick sticking out be very careful if you decide to hammer that thing and beat it in or chip it because you could potentially blow the plaster off on on the wall next to it so something to bear in mind so you can see how i'm getting on pretty well here straightening this and again i'm working everything off my right hand side the original wall it's got to be flush to that i'm not re-skimming that whole wall this is just going to be a patch so the idea get it all straight back to what the original would be and check your angles guys as well because yes the joint is important but you don't want a big wonky angle if the wall here is bent you can come out six inches and make sure it's straight that way you know but to be fair to these plasters like that walls 100 100 years old and it's still still there the cornice 100 year old probably a bit longer it's still there so you can see the suction on this i can rub this practically straight away um i'm gonna clean down my cornice here a wee bit as well um couple, uh, if there is dry spots in this you can give them a wee splash of water just like i did there but again when you're rubbing this you want to try and get it as smooth and closed in as possible um you don't want to play with it too much either because if it's dry you'll just be burning holes in it basically and making it harder to skim and again clean this this joint down and then i'm going to show you something here on what i'm doing with this float i'm actually cutting my render back here you want to allow sort of like a trowel full basically this is going to be a joint so you kind of want to make sure you have it cut back to allow for your plaster coat your skim coat your gypsum coat to be able to go flush with the, the existing wall so it's kind of weird i know i told you is drag the straight edge up your existing wall and get it all nice and straight and level but you have to start off level and then when you're coming to patching you want to the same as the door frame i showed this before on previous videos on how to float a, a wall ready for plaster this this is the same idea there was door frame there you want to cut it back and leave a wee edge for your skim to be able to work off and that's why it looks like i'm spending a lot of time on this joint and that's because yeah, i'm i want to make sure that i have room for my plaster that's kind of what i was talking about earlier there about skin can pop off the original but that's okay and surprisingly when i had my render cut back and floated there i was flush to what the original render was so i was quite happy at that but yeah you want to test this and check this guys the last thing you want to do is leave this the next day because this stuff this this render here it's a four to one mix this one but on these walls this is going to be solid the next day in fact before you go home it's probably probably really ready to skim you probably could get away with skimming it that's sort of the suction you have here um again really concentrate on that joint it will it'll benefit you the next day when you come to skim and i'll probably do another video on how i'm gonna skim and finish this wall